This is the place to be. The word of God to us this month has been, I'm redeemed a wonder to my world. Can somebody say that with me? I'm redeemed a wonder to my world. In the course of the month, as I told us last Sunday, we're going to be training us on how you can operate in the supernatural, how you can command signs and wonders. That's why, as I instructed us, never miss any service because every service will be a training section. But at the end of this month, you will command always signs and wonders in Jesus' glorious name. Amen. This is a special communion Sunday. It's also our enough is enough service. And I believe you have the list of the things you want to say enough is enough to. If you have that list, please drop it on this ground. God of heaven will be stopping those things and giving you a new lease of life. In a short while also we'll pray with them and God of heaven in his infinite mercy will mark them enough is enough. In Jesus mighty name. Now I want you to come with me this morning to 2 Samuel 24 verse 16. I take my test from there. As we build up in this service. 2 Samuel 24, verse 16. If you are there, we'll read together. One, two, go. And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord repented him of the evil and said to the angel that destroyed the people, it is enough. Stay now thy hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing place of Aruna the Jebusite. It is enough. Stay your hand. I don't know what I've been destroying you. I don't know what I've been spoiling you. I don't know what I've been devouring you. It is enough. Stay your hand. That's what we are sent to speak to you this morning. And everything in this world have ears. They will hear. Yes. Precious people of God, there is no challenge. There is no issue of life. <laughs> For the woman, her own was issue of blood. But people have different issues. So there is no issue of life. No problem. No opposition. No challenge that is designed to be everlasting. Please settle this in your subconscious. So whatever you are going through now that is undesired is not permitted to continue. That challenge started one day. That sickness started one day. It must also end one day. And this is that day. I'm glad to announce to you that this is the day. Today will be the burial ceremony for poverty in your generation. Today, God will divorce you from every form of sickness and disease, both curable and incurable. The Bible told me that surely there is an end. Surely means notwithstanding, come what may. However, very, very certainly, most assuredly, nonetheless, there is an end. And thy expectation shall not be cut off. So there's an end to that barrenness. There's an end to that sickness. There's an end to that marital spell. There's an end to that delay. There's an end to that misfortune. There's an end to that loneliness. There's an end to that depression. Please agree with God today that today will be the end. Glory to God. Now that today is enough, is enough. You don't need to wait for another day. An end is coming to that satanic siege in your life. Yeah. Whatever wall of Jericho be standing against you from making progress and advancement in career and business, in life, that wall of Jericho will give way today. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please understand that the devil has three major core assignments and they are number one, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He has not applied for change of... Um, profession. He's still stealing, he's still killing, he's still destroying. But you know one thing is this, 1 John 3, 8, 
This, the Bible says, this is why the Son of God came to make manifest, that he may destroy the works, plural, works of the devil. So every work of the devil, whether stealing, killing, destroying, can be destroyed. Yes. If you don't understand, one of them exposed the devil one day. You know, you saw Jesus. They, Have you come to destroy us before the time? Which means they know they can also be destroyed. I stand here today as a man under authority. And under the power backing this commission, and God's servant, Bishop David, what the apostle over this commission, I speak to that situation in your life that is undesirable. Enough is enough. Yes. Stay your hand. Yes. Enough is enough. Yes. Stay your hand. Yes. So whatever is destroying you, stealing from you, killing you, delaying you, stopping you, limiting you, whatever is frustrating your life, your business, your career, your family, the works of your hand, your finances, I say to them, enough is enough. Yes. Stay your hand. Enough is enough. Amen. To that curable and curable disease, I say enough is enough. Amen. To that same movement in the body, you are going to the hospital, they say nothing is wrong with you, but you know something is definitely wrong. Enough is enough. Amen. To that misbehavior of your children, your spouse, wayward life, I decree enough is enough. Amen. To that gambling habit, that wasteful living, that indebtedness, I say, enough is enough. Yes, Stay your hand. Yes, to every form of ancestral cause, ancestral spirit, warring against members of the family that no one will be able to lift their head. Abandon project everywhere. Evil spell in the spirit that make people to hurt you. Even when you do people good, they use evil to pay you back. Enough is enough. Yes. Stay your hand. Yes. Enough is enough. Yes. Stay your hand. Yes. Whatever be crying will not cry again. Yes. One day, a man stood to share testimony. In our church in Kaduna, then Nigeria. From 2005 to 2015, 10 years, every year he must end in losses. January, he will borrow money to start business, he'll be doing well, but immediately the year is ending, he will go into debt, problems, misfortunes here and there. But he came to the church, had the word of God, like this. <laughs> and God began to reverse the irreversible. Now what happened that 2015? He sent for his goods from Onicha in Anambra State, Nigeria. He's into pharmaceutical products. He sent for those goods. First of all, the first one, they carried it down to Kano. He said, oh, Kaduna. That's another state altogether. But with the help of God and prayers, I was able to retrieve it so there was no misfortune. Second one, he sent again. And the vehicle, the, the bus conveying that the goose caught fire. But you know what mysterious saying? As the goose were burning, two cartons to his own, the fire stopped. For the first time in 10 years, he didn't suffer misfortune. And since that time, he's been doing well. As I'm talking now, he has a baby boy, the building two houses, it's about two houses now, doing well. No misfortune since that time to today. As a matter of fact, last month he said, Send me money, which means he's still doing well. Amen. <laughs> if not, <laughs> if, if you are begging, will you do that? Glory to God. Now I'm here to announce to someone that whatever been crying in your life, in your family, enough is enough. Yeah. Stay your hand. I command marital spell to stay his hand. Amen. I command shame and reproach, misfortune, to stay in your hand. Amen. I command the oppression of the devil, strange cobwebs, men and women molesting you in the dream. And before you know it, misfortune comes. Something that's supposed to be good turns to evil. Even when they promise you, they fail you. I decree whatever is responsible for that, stay in your hand. Amen. And all is enough. Oh, my Bible told me Jeremiah 30, 16 to 17. 
That all, not some, all that devour you shall be devoured. All that spoil you shall be for a spoil. All your adversaries will go into captivity. All that pray on you shall be given for a prayer. Why? He said, I will restore health to you. To restore is to bring back to the original state. In the beginning, it was not so. So whatever was not so from the beginning, God will reverse the reversible. I will restore health to you and heal you of your wound. Say yet the Lord. Not say it, Pastor Kenwa. Say yet the Lord. And he cannot lie. Far be it from God that he will lie. So you are going to experience restoration. And in restoration, you know, that's one of the things God told me to come and do here. He gave me the error agenda. He said, I should establish you, I should restore you, and I should advance you. So expect those things among others. Now, when God restores, there's nothing lost because he restored the years. The canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm has eaten. Years can be restored. God can go back. If you say it's not true, go and ask Jabez. Jabez was suffering from sorrow. But one day God has to go back to his naming ceremony and correct the problem. <laughs> and it became honorable. So I don't know when the issue started. But by the forces of restoration, God can go back and change whatever needs to be changed for you to go forward. That's what we're saying. So enough is enough to that issue of concern. In the name of Jesus. So all devouring you, I decree enough is enough. Amen. All praying on you, I say oh, enough is enough. Amen. All spoiling you, I say enough is enough. Amen. Every form of miscarriage, every form of spare, barrenness of any kind, I say enough is enough. Amen. Forces of disappointment, forces of joblessness, forces of indebtedness, confusion of any kind, I say enough is enough. Amen. Oh, someone have been earning in leaky pockets. Near success syndrome. Whenever good thing wants to come to you, they deny you. Depression of any kind. Curable and curable diseases. I say enough is enough. Yeah. Oh, someone here, you've been suffering from the hatred of men. People don't just like you. People don't just like you. No, that must not continue. Amen. Some misfortunes have made them to be hiding from people. But enough is enough. From now, they will start writing you a letter. <laughs> Can we visit you? You know, when they start writing you like that, you know that things have changed. Yes. Glory to God. You know, there are some people now, even when they will, they will, they will, they will when, you, when God has blessed you, people will want to link themselves to you, whether they are related with you or not. They say, it's my mother's, uh, sister's, aunt. Just, <laughs> but if the person is not doing well, even if it's a blood relation, you say, ah, don't mention that person around here. From now, they start writing you later. Amen. That they want to visit you. Amen. Why? They can see things are working. Amen. Say with me, I hear. Amen. Congratulations. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I beg, just, just laugh at the devil. Just laugh at him. Because whatever made you to come here today has brought an end to that affliction. Amen. Just laugh, 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 laugh at the devil. How will you laugh when your testimony comes? <laughs> Joy, laughter, we never cease in your habitation. God of heaven will give you a testimony that will make you to laugh. One day a lady came to me. She narrated the story of her family. That for 27 years, nobody has ever married in their family. I can't imagine that. But I was moved with compassion, prayed for her, anointed her with oil. She was on the ground. But when she came back, I don't know where she went, but when she came back, <laughs> that same year, she married to a handsome young man. Glory to God. The last time I had her, they had a baby boy. Glory to God. What the devil says is not possible. God will make it possible in your life. Please understand this, that in life, what you don't confront, you can't conquer. In life, what you don't confront, you can't conquer. What you are not angry with, you cannot be free from. What you don't react against has a right to remain. Don't say it's mere consider. I don't know why it is like this. No, if it is not desirable, confront it to conquer it. If it's not making you comfortable, 
is not making your life to be at ease. React against it. Bien, I want you to get angry today and to react against whatever is not bringing you joy and fulfillment. Hezekiah was given a death sentence. I learned so much from this man called Hezekiah. Isaiah 38, 1 to 5. He was given a death sentence from Isaiah. <laughs> By heaven's instruction, God was the one that gave the death sentence, not the devil. Prepare your house. Put your house in order. Write your will. You will surely die. Tell your children where your properties are. He said you will surely die. Which means it was an incurable disease. It was a, a terminal disease. But the Hezekiah taught me something. That nobody has the monopoly of God. Isaiah, you have spoken. Go home. Let me settle it with God. And he went and turned and faced the wall. I said, Father, remember now. I have served you with a perfect heart. And God didn't say he was lying. If not, God said, shut up. When did you serve me with a perfect heart? Remember? What will happen to the residue of my days? Bible history has it that he was, he was 55 years that time. And you know, the least a man can live, according to David, though, David's theory, because you can, that's David's theory. He died at 72. So, but Moses believed in 120. He died at 120. So it's a choice. <laughs> but the least a man should live is 70 years. According to David's theory, God gave him 15 more years to meet that minimum. Do you understand? But he took it by force. He didn't go to sleep. Since Isaiah has said it now, and I see how my condition is. Anyway, let me wait now. My children come. That house here is my own. No, he said, no, I'm not ready to die. <laughs> he reacted. And he got his testimony. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Some of you, certain things happen to you. You start crying. You start to give up easily. Stop giving up easily. No! React against whatever is not working. React against whatever you don't like. Glory to God. <laughs> because you are the one created with eternal life. The problem is not created with eternal life. Say with me, I hear. Amen. One day a woman came to me. And she said that there's a problem in her family. What is the problem? She said they told her from the village that a very wicked wizard in the village used to go to the graveyard, that's burial ground now, hmm? to go and make incantation against the husband, that the husband will not do well. And truly, it seemed what the incantation was working against the man, because the house he was building in the village, he abandoned it. They are not even go to the village. <laughs> Number two, the man was doing well in the business before, the business, nothing was working again. And number three, the man doesn't even want to go out. Doesn't, he would just stay indoors every day. So it was the wife now through her, her business, her you know, tailoring business, was now feeding the man and the children. She said, Pastor, I'm tired. I said, what you are saying, is it true? He said, yes. I said, okay, don't worry. I'm going to send the ground on errand for you. You know, this, this art here. Don't forget this, so. You can also use it. You have authority to use it. This ground is a very powerful spiritual weapon. Hmm? I said, don't worry. I'm going to speak to the ground for you. Why? The earth hears. Huh? Yes. Jeremiah 22, 29 and 30. Oh, earth, oh, earth, hear the voice of the Lord. God wanted to make a man barren. He didn't go to the man. Touch not. <laughs> he said, Jeremiah, write to the, speak to the ground that this man will ever remember and it was so. <laughs> so you can send this out on errand. I already know that by spiritual growth. I know that one. <laughs> Amen. And number two, Revelation 12, 14 to 16. The Bible said the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed the flood, cast against the woman and her seed. So the earth can help you. The earth can help your business. The earth, the earth can help your family. This one, every year, everybody is running in your family. Nobody is making progress. Speak to the earth to help you. Swallow every flaw that gets you. Even covenant that be made by people you don't know. In your generation. What can I get? You can ask the earth to swallow it up. And I spoke that way. And we prayed. Do you know what happened? The same wizard saw trailer coming on the road, highway, and decided to give himself to the trailer. They couldn't bury him. They couldn't, they, he was crushed. To show you that God has hand in it, the same man started going out again. Started doing business. 
even as a matter of fact, when the woman was sharing the testimony, the man bought embroidery machine for the woman to improve her business. Which means things have changed. <laughs> in the name of Jesus, in the name that is higher than every name, in the name that at the mention of it, every knee of everything in heaven and earth bows, I command this earth to help you. Every flood of the devil against you, against your family, against your business, against your career, this earth will open up and swallow it in the name of Jesus. Everyone fighting you secretly, openly. Those moving evil movement for you. Those ganging up against you, against your career, in your workplace. I decree this art will swallow them up in the name of Jesus. If you don't understand, add that Amabiran and Akura. Ask them what happened to them. Ask them. In case you don't fear, ask them what happened to them. The art opened up and swallow them. The art still opens up to today. Are you getting me now? This art will hear your cry today. Yeah. When we pray today, this art will hear. Yeah. And this art will help you. Yeah. Anywhere you go on this land, help will come for you. Yeah. Oh, someone is here today. Hear me. Before the sun is hot tomorrow. Before the sun is hot tomorrow. Check the time. Check the date. Before the sun is hot tomorrow, help will come for you. Before the sun is hot tomorrow, help will come for you. Enough is enough. To every shame. Enough is enough. To not having enough to pay house rent. Enough is enough. For not meeting bees. Enough is enough for every form of reproach. The same way God rolled away the reproach of Rachel, God will roll away every, every reproach of your family. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Please, you may be seated. Precious people of God, understand this. God is all you need to have all your needs met. Thank God for that ministration required again this morning. The answer to every need in your life is a miracle. Anytime any need arises, just tell yourself, I need a miracle. I need what? A miracle. And miracles are manifestations of the supernatural. Please, I just believe that you understood what I thought last Sunday. So because there are lying wonders and genuine wonders. So when we're talking about miracles here, signs and wonders here, we're talking about genuine ones. Are you getting me now? That's the acts of God. I will define it in a short while so that you know. That's what you need anytime there is a need. Anytime there's a need, what you need is what? A miracle. And God will meet you at the point of your need. So what is a miracle? Remember, we've been studying on operating in the supernatural. So this is part 2A. Operating in the supernatural. We have seen that redemption is at the root. That the supernatural is at the root of our redemption. Operating the supernatural by 2A. We ask the question, what is a miracle? Please, let's define it right now. Number one, miracles are no accidents. Miracles are no what? Accidents. They are the deliberate acts of God provoked by the faith of men. Miracles are no accidents. They are the deliberate acts of God provoked by the faith of men. Which means miracles are actually deliberate acts of God. They don't just happen. They are provoked to happen. That's why, do you know, among the gifts of the Holy Ghost, there's what you call the gift of working of miracles. So they are worked out. Do you understand? You work on them to, to make it happen. And how do you do that? It is your deliberate faith in what God has said that makes miracles to happen. They are not accident. Somebody say, Pastor, I don't understand. Look at the issue of the woman with the issue of blood. In Luke chapter 8, 40 to 48. Remember, a man called Jerus came to Jesus to come and hear the child. And Jesus was about going there. And then the crowd followed him. People were thronging him. Among them was a woman that was sick. And she had suffered from the hand of physicians. She had spent all her money. She used all her money to pay medical bills. She was still not hid. See how wicked the devil is? 
And she was having issue of blood, which means the thing was just running. Since she had spent all her money, no money to pay medical bill, the thing was still running. And in Jewish custom, a woman having the issue of blood is not supposed to be seen in the public. But this woman despised all us. Why? She heard of the miracle that Jesus did. She said within herself, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. And she took off. The blood was showing that she was the one carrying issue of blood. I believe people must have been sad. She would have been just messing her up. But she refused to allow anything to stop her. Don't allow things to stop you. Some people you give up so in any small thing you just cry and give up. No! You must be consistent and persistent. Without persistence, the snake couldn't enter the ark. Do you understand? The, not the snare, even tortoise, they, were, they are preserved today because they entered the ark. But you can imagine how slow. But they refuse to give up. I believe there are faster animals that gave up on the way. And there are no more today. <laughs> so this woman went and touched the hem of his garment. And the Bible said immediately the issue of blood stank. The thing ceased. What could medical cure couldn't help? Touching the hem of Jesus' garment brought to stop, to the level of stopping, which is enough is enough. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Jesus knew that virtue went out of him. He began to say, who, who touched me? Why Peter said, Jesus, I'm older than you now. You should know now. We're all thronging you here. It's thronging we are doing. We are not touching. <laughs> Jesus said, no, somebody touched me. And the woman came forth and narrated her story, shared her testimony. Jesus said, thy faith had made thee whole. Thy faith, not the power of Jesus. Thy faith had made you whole. Look at most of the miracles Jesus did. It was by the faith of the recipients. I've told us here before, the power of God is on 24 hours. But it's the day your faith meets with the power of God that your own miracle is delivered to you. Save me out here. This your blood stands. Which means, enough is enough. It was by the deliberate faith of that woman that the deliberate act of God was released. What are miracles number two? Miracles are the deliberate acts of God triggered by the desperate faith of man. Desperate. Desperate faith. Now, I want to give you an illustration now. Understand this. And there's no one here that this thing has not happened to. Have you had an issue of concern before? That is like life and death. As if, if tomorrow comes and that problem is not solved, shame will come. I pray for somebody, that shame will not come. Yeah. Do you know how you pray that night? Even you that before, when the Holy Ghost woke you up to pray, you put it in gear five and snore away. <laughs> that day you pray like, are you getting me now? Now I want to ask you, did you get result or not? You got the results. That's how you're supposed to live every day. Yes. But because things are working, you put your hand in your pocket. God, how are you? Are you there? <laughs> <laughs> you wake up in the morning, plus God might not devil. You go your way. <laughs> That's how to, you need to be desperate. Do you understand? That same way you got that result. That's how you're supposed to live every day. Are you with me? So miracles are deliberate acts of God provoked by Triggered by deliberate faith of men. And we can see examples in the scriptures. I'll give you a quick two examples. One is Mark chapter 2, 1 to 12. And the other one is Mark 10, 46 to 52. I will just um, tell the story about those scriptures. I will progress. Number one, there was that man who was... Uh, he had been suffering from passing from fall. He determined, he was so deliberate, he wanted to be healed. You know what? He was saying, enough is enough. I'm tired of this staying in one place. Enough is enough. I must get my healing. I heard Jesus is doing a crusade somewhere. I'm going there. He called all his friends. See your work. You must carry me to that place. And they all agreed. They carried him to the place. When they got there, the whole crusade ground filled. No space at all. In the house. He, said, he said, this is a joke. I must get my healing today. Not oh, this one is a joke. Is there no roof? There's roof. 
carry me to the top of the roof. Tear it. Even if the landlord disturb after we settle it. Tear the roof. Drop me. Even if I die, I die. Like Esther, if I perish, I perish. Drop me there. If I die, he will resurrect me. <laughs> the Bible said, as they were doing this, look at verse 5 of that scripture. Mark 2, 5. Jesus saw their faith. When Jesus saw their faith, he said of the sake of the passage, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Which means, what the man was doing, all the things they were doing was a demonstration of deliberate faith. And that provoked Jesus to hear him. When Jesus said, your sins are forgiven, because he knew the root of the problem. He solved it. He uprooted it. Some people would solve symptoms. You know, many medical things, it's just to help you to subtract the symptoms. It doesn't uproot the problem. But this one, Jesus knew the problem. He uprooted it. That is, all they found to say and they start to say, they say, hi, Jesus, who is this man? Who, where does he get power to forgive sin? Jesus said, for you to know that I have the power to forgive sin, no problem. Man, carry your bed and go. Somebody that now worked for since four years. Even today, medical practice, if you have not worked for two weeks, they will carry you to physiotherapy and be teaching you how to drop your leg. Just drop it like this. <laughs> so train you again how to work. But this man, Jesus said, carry your bed and go. And the man did not waste time. He carried his bed and went. And I know, you know, in those days, the bed of those days should be stronger than the one of today. Abby, if you, some of you, when you went to school, you know the school bed you used that time was iron. Now they're using wood. <laughs> so you can imagine that kind of bed. The man had no he carried it and went away. To the extent that the same people that were complaining, that the one that said in verse 12, we have never seen it in this fashion before. I call it a new fashion testimony. So deliberate faith will give you what? New fashion testimony. You need to react against what is not working. By your deliberate faith. Somebody is saying today, I must not go with this sickness. This high blood sugar, this diabetes, this ulcer, this pie must not go with me today. As I take the communion today, I shall be healed. It's my stronghold. So be deliberate about it. Another one was that of blind Bartimaeus. Anyway, we are still calling him blind, but he's no more blind. He has seen 2,000 years ago. <laughs> but I call him Uncle BBT. Blind Bartimaeus Timaeus. That's his name. You know, this man was among beggars, but he deliberately decided, I will not be here again. Where is it that you are found today that you, want, you don't want to be again? Where is it that you are right now, you are there, you don't like that place? You are both only. You are not to be Bennett. If you are Bennett, you are an illegal occupant. So be desperate and deliberate to change your position. To get to your rightful place. This man heard that Jesus was passing. Now, that was the shortest trip that Jesus made. Look at that, Mark, that uh, Mark 1046. This Bible says Jesus went to Jericho and came out of Jericho. Very short trip. But this man determined, I must get something from this. Enough is enough. <laughs> you know what he did? He cried. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. All the fact to say and start to say, the elders, you are not ordained. Eh? You are not baptized. <laughs> Listen, we have to speak to him for you. Do you understand? Keep quiet. <laughs> you don't understand where I'm coming from. Today, I must get this thing. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the Bible says, Jesus turned and gave him attention. When you are desperate with faith, heaven will give you attention. Amen. Jesus, do you know what that means? Heaven and earth stood still. Because there was nothing that was made that wasn't made by Jesus. Stood still to answer one man that was deliberate and desperate with his faith. What do you want, Bartimaeus? How is he consulted me? If he has asked me that day, he will become the president of Israel. <laughs> because anything he asked that time, they will give it to him. I could have given him a size book to write everything. He only asked for one thing, that I might receive my sight. He didn't ask for wife. Because when he was begging, would the wife be with him? Yeah, nobody now. No woman will agree. He didn't ask for a house. He didn't ask for anything. That I made. And Jesus said, let it be to you according to your faith. And immediately, not go and come back tomorrow. Immediately. 
Straight away, immediately, he got a sight. Now hear me. Today is enough is enough. Yeah. If your faith can be deliberate and desperate enough, you will get your miracle here. Yeah. Now hear me. God said if your neighbor come to you to ask you for a good thing, if you have him by day, don't dare him go and come back tomorrow. Yeah. If he can tell you, don't tell your neighbor to go and come back tomorrow. In your human relationship, is he the one that will tell you go and come back tomorrow? No. no. Look at that proverb, chapter 3, 27 and 28. He said if your neighbor comes to you to ask for a good thing and you have it, don't tell him to go and come tomorrow. Give it to him. So we God not tell you to go and come back tomorrow. I will heal you tomorrow. I will bless you tomorrow. I will change your soul. Today is today. Ojodui say Ojodui. If it's right before. Today is today. He will answer you today. He will answer you today. He will send you help today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Woo! <laughs> so the question now, how do we operate in the supernatural? As we begin to round up, how do we operate in the supernatural? Last week we saw that you operate in the supernatural through the power of the new birth. I encourage you to please get the teaching of last one. If you have not listened to it, go back to the YouTube and listen to it. And all this midweek services also. Now, today we want to improve on what we have said. How do you operate in the supernatural? To operate in the supernatural, be committed to spiritual growth and development. Be committed to what? Spiritual growth and development. This is a non-transferable responsibility. You know that nobody grew for you the way you are now, <laughs> physically. The same way too, nobody will grow for you spiritually. Nobody will develop for you spiritually. That's why if there are certain things you have not done that you need to do, go and do them. You not be baptized in water, go and be baptized. You have not, you have not, you are not speaking in tongues, go and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You are not studying the word of God, go and study. I will show you some major things you need to pay attention to towards your spiritual growth. I will show you as a practitioner. But you see, in elementary biology, we are taught there are seven major characteristics of every living thing. And one of them, the major, is growth. Every living thing grows. If the thing is not growing, it's not living. Are you following me now? There are others like movement, nutrition, respiration, excretion, reproduction, sensitivity. Those are characteristics of every living thing. <laughs> I want to ask you a question. Or let's go with this illustration. I don't know. I think that children are not here. Is there, any, is there any child here? Is there anybody with a child here? Okay. Uh, please, come, my sister. Don't be shy. Come, come. Uh, come. I want to illustrate something to you. I want to show you something. Now, many years ago, I don't know how old she is, but many years ago, she was a child, three of us. And it's a gear, it's a gear, Labi. Okay. The day the mother gave back to her, everything she needed to be a woman was inside her. Is it true? But at the age of, let me say, because today now many things happen, between age one to let's say ten, can she give birth? She needed to grow to come to that age, to be matured enough, to be able do you understand? Why well, I'm using 10? Because we have had stories of people getting pregnant at 9 and all that. A lot of things happen today. But let's just, that. But are you, are you with me? So she needed to grow to that level to be able to mature to carry a baby. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Please clap for her. Go back. Now, now let me tell you something. There are many things you are looking for to handle in terms of miracle signs and wonders you have not been able to handle it because you have not grown. You have not grown. All you need to do is to grow too much. God cannot tempt you with it. God cannot. It's not possible. Now, how many of us are parents here? Okay. You have to do Assuming you have a boy of seven years. Hmm? And he said, Mommy, he said, you know, school has just resumed. Um, uncle will not drop me in school again. You need to buy me because you are mommy or daddy enough. 
You know, children, they have faith too. Don't try it with them or they have faith. That's why you should not promise them anything anyhow. Because they will hold you and tell you, Daddy, you're a liar. You said you would buy me a rope you have not bought it. <laughs> because they have faith. Your daddy enough to do that now. Huh? Your children have faith in you. They will even be boasting with their friend. Ah, my daddy will buy me a rope I know my daddy. And he has not paid house rent too. But they... <laughs> <laughs> so, assuming that child comes to you and say, look, daddy, mommy, I need a SUV. In short, as a matter of fact, I'm in Red House, I need a red jeep so that I can be carrying my people in Red House with me. And as a matter of fact, Uncle John should not drive me again. I'll be the one driving. I know you love your child. You know, you know we have to tell somebody, somebody I gifted the on my porch or something like that. Is this service? Okay. You see, ask her now. How is I can see her now? I could have used her for the example. Ask her, when the child was seven years, can you give, her, give him a porch? No. You can't do that. No matter how you love the child, you can't. Why? Ask me now, why? He's not matured. He has not grown enough. You say, okay, wait till you are 18 years. You have the money. You can do it. But you say, wait. Grow up. Mature. Because this leg can't even read the pay that self. And he said he wants to drive. <laughs> That's an accident going to happen. That death going to happen. Are you getting me now? And you don't want to lose your child. No matter how you love. Okay, assuming the mother could knife with the child and say, hey, you used to buy people car anyhow. You even give people every now. See, you everywhere, you're giving people car. Your son, you can't even give him small car like that. Will you do it? No. You will not do it. You will not do it. That same way. God created you in his own likeness and his own image. There are many things God cannot hand over to you because you have not grown. You have not grown. That's why, you see, have you heard that faith worketh with patience? Yes. They cast not away your confidence, which has a great recompense of reward. After you have done the will of God, you need patience that you may receive the promise. Hebrews 10, 35 and 36. Why the patience? Faith is now, now. Why patience again? Because of maturity. There are certain things you are crying for now. If they give you, you will backslide. Some people are praying, God, give me, give me 10 million rands. If you see one million rand, you go and marry three wives. <laughs> and God knows. So he said, mature, my son. Grow up. <laughs> are you getting the thing now? Grow. So many of the things you are not seeing is because you are not grown up to much. You are not grown up to much. God will not allow you to be tempted more than you are able. But with the temptation, you will make a world of escape. First Corinthians 10, 13. Eh? God will not allow you to face what you cannot carry. He will, will be unrighteous if he does that. So you have to mature. And you see, one, one thing about growth is that when you now grow and you mature to get that, you discover your prayer point reduce. That's why there are many things you are not praying for today. Years ago, you used to pray for it because you have grown too much. You become a natural thing in your life. So with this understanding, nobody should let you or force you to go for growth. It's something you must go for. Development, you develop yourself. How do I develop myself? How do I grow as a spiritual person? Number one, majorly by the word of God. That is the food. As newborn babes, desire the sincere make of the world that you may grow thereby. First Peter 2 2. So if you are not eating the word of God, that's the food of your spirit. If you are not eating it, the way you eat physical food to have nourished body, if you are not eating it, you can't grow. Do you understand? So you have to eat the word of God. Number two is prayer. You have to pray. If you are not given to prayer, may God heal you of every prayer disease. In Jesus' name. <laughs> prayer is one way you must grow as a Christian. Fasting is one of them. Meditation is the word of God. And finally, at least this one, there are many things. So, walking in love, walking by faith, all of them are part of it. But I'm just giving you five major ones. Number, one, number five is obedience of faith. That is the general overseer of them all. Do you understand? If all your knowledge, all your eating the word, all your hearing it, writing it down, you are not doing it, it won't profit you. If all the things you have written since you became a winner, all the notes you've been writing, you have been doing it, you won't be here. <laughs> Do you understand? But the problem we have is a doing. James 1.25. He that looketh at the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. So your blessing is in your doing. 
So make sure all the words you are learning, you are practicing them. So we call it obedience of faith. You are doing what you are commanded to do. When you do what you are commanded to do, you become a commander of signs and wonder. You become a natural thing. Say with me, I hear. So if you say, now give, you say, over my dead body, I won't give. You can't prosper. If you like, listen to anybody you want to listen to. Turn yourself outside, cover yourself with blanket. You will not. Because that's the only way out. You see people giving, you fight them, no problem. But you see, go and beg. <laughs> that's the only way out for that. Is anyone afflicted? Let him pray. The only way out of affliction is prayer. And you have affliction, you say you won't pray. You're quoting scripture. You, you do not go. Are you guessing? <laughs> so <laughs> find a prescription for everything. He said, you pay your tithe, the heaven above you will open. He said, I lied over my dead body. I will not. The heaven will be tight. You may be giving other things, so it's like going to farm. When you go to farm and you plant seed, you plant your melon. If there's no rain, will the melon survive? Yeah. So the tithe open the heavens for you. So that any other thing, any other thing you plant there, eh, will grow. But he said, no, I'm planting. And now this tithe, I don't believe in it. It's only this planting. I'll plant and plant. When, if the rain doesn't come, you will dry seed is what you get. And weeds. All of them have their own place. So the one you're not doing is the one that is doing you. <laughs> so there's nobody to blame. There's nobody to blame. The one you're not doing is what is doing you. Go back to scriptures. Galatians 4, 1 to 3. In as much as a child is a hair, eh? well, okay, when a hair is a child, he will remain under governors and tutors. But when he grows up, he, he, will, he will not have what? He will have power. Even so we are, the Bible said, when we are children, we are in bondage under the elements of the world. When you are a child, you suffer what the people suffer. Somebody is a prince, is, is, is a hair apparent. He's supposed to be the next king. If the father is not there, the housemaid will kick him, stupid boy. Get out from here. In as much as a child. But when he's grown up, if he's coming, everybody's. Do you understand? Yes. So many things are messing you up because you have not grown. When you grow, you'll be in command. Hear me? Children are born, sons are given. Did you understand that? Yes, Isaiah 9, verse 6. Unto us, a child is born, unto us, a son is given. You, you, you become a son by growth, sir. <laughs> but a child, you are born. You just come out like that. And you say, ah, wah, 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 looking for breast milk. You are, you are, that's the only thing you understand. But when you're a son, you can descend between good and evil. May God give us understanding. Amen. Say with me, I will grow. May God of heaven help us in the growth process. So everyone here, please, take responsibility for your growth. Do you understand? And that's the summary of my case here. Take responsibility for your own growth. Nobody eats food for you. All of you that are married here, I know you love your husband, you love your wife, but will you be so hungry? You say, honey, I'm just feeling too hungry, and, but I'm tired. Come and eat for me. Just be eating. You'll be entering my system. <laughs> you know, it won't happen. That's why, you know, the sons of Skiva, the, have you read the Bible? There's, there's seven boys called the sons of Skiva. They thought that salvation is by inheritance. They didn't get born again. Their father must have been preaching to them to get born again. They said, since our father is the priest, we, are, we inherited it. And they went to harass a demon. One demon possessed man. They said, come here. Don't you know we are sons of Skiva? Our father is the priest. We inherited salvation. <laughs> so we adjure you in the name of Jesus that Paul preached, not the one who preached, the one Paul preached. <laughs> the demon say, oh, yeah, you, please come close, let's discuss. <laughs> he said, that Jesus, I know him. Oh. Paul, I know him. Where is your ID card? <laughs> the one man, one possessed, demon possessed, messed up seven heavy men. They ran away naked. <laughs> because they refused to grow. <laughs> they refused to grow. Some people now are running from witches and wizards because they've not grown. Cat, cat, cat. Just make noise around your house. You start shaking. You say they've sent them. Cockroach, pass your house. Holy Ghost, fire. Cockroach. (laughs) 
One pastor took over from me from a station. Honestly, sometimes we even forget to lock our door in that house and sleep. I didn't hear which one day. He came, he called me, he said, Pastor, you are wicked. I said, what did I do? He said, he didn't tell me that witches are living around the house. <laughs> he said, I used to hear them talk. I said, I don't have the gift of hearing witch. I don't have, I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know how their language is. Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> if I want to sleep, I sleep. If I want to wake up, I wake up. Sometimes I have a snow on top. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So please, help me tell you, never grow up. I glory to God. Please understand it. That spiritual authority is only entrusted to the matured believer. Spiritual authority is entrusted to who? Matured believer. And I've shown those through scripture that I Genesis, uh, Galatians 4, 1 to 3. If you, are not, if you are not grown, God cannot trust you. Number two, spiritual maturity is not about age, but about depth in spiritual things. Don't forget this. Spiritual maturity is not about age, but about depth in spiritual things. Depth, depth, depth. That's why you need the Holy Ghost, because he's one that searches even the deep things of God. 1 Corinthians 2, 10. This thing has been revealed to us by his spirit, for his spirit searches all things. Yea, the deep things of God. It's your depth. So you can come in today. Have you discovered that even some new, new members have more be- 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 testimony than old members? Because the old members are used to God, the senior brothers and senior sisters of God. They are used to God. They rub shoulders with God. But somebody will come here openly, sincerely, you will believe, and you will get the miracle. If you are there, change you, change yourself. Or don't don't be rubbing shoulders with God. Spiritual maturity. So it's not a function of your chronic, chronological age. Somebody can be 60 years and then he's also 40 years in church, but he's not in touch. Somebody can enter today and give you. Now, this thing I'm telling you is very, very important. I can give you an example with my little life. I say, when I got born again, eh? Some believers were harassing us. Honestly, when we go to youth fellowship, they'll be greeting in tongues. Hey! Hey! You are kidding me. I will go back and say, God, are you sure I'm born again? I thought greeting in tongues was a gift. I'm telling you, I thought it was a gift. I said, when will I grow to be greeting in tongues? And then yeah, they were cautious, they will do it. I said, God. But listen to me, all of them were fake. Fake. Say with me, fake. Fake, fake. One was owing me to the year of release. I released it. <laughs> he came very early in the morning. I was even praying. No, my youth president. He said, hey, can, you, can you just help me with this? And I gave him. He never paid the money until the year of release. I released it. Don't allow people to intimidate you with spiritual gymnastics. Amen. Don't be yourself. <laughs> be yourself. Many ladies have been deceived that I don't marry useless people because of spiritual intimidation. Be yourself. It was, it's not a gift. So, but the only thing, I thank them or they helped me because I now went, I said, God, you know, it was like, it was embarrassing because when they greet, I can't greet in tongues. So I will go back like this, I will stay with my Bible. From one, sometimes I will read the Bible from night till morning. I just say day has broken. I, I need that grace today. I just need that grace today. Honestly, I will read like this because I wanted to. I want to get this thing. <laughs> but before you know it, it's much more time. Do you understand? You two will talk. People will listen. Are you getting me, ba? You will talk. People will listen. But it wasn't like that. Before. They really did with us. I'm telling you. So please, what we are saying is what? Grow up mature. When you are matured, Things can be handed over to you. And it has nothing to do with your age. You can be, you can be in church in 19 Elijah and not know some things. That's what you know. Anybody preaching here, I write notes. Because the one I'm teaching you now is my own. You are collecting it. The one you know, I don't know. So any opportunity I have for you to talk, I will collect your own to add to my own. <laughs> do you understand? <laughs> yeah. But some people, if they say, ah, that person is a young pastor, he doesn't know what does he have. If there's something God can put in the person's mouth that can change your life. Any service I come, I ask God, I want to take home from this service, no matter who is preaching. Ask my staff, all our, all our staff, even in the staff devotion, many of them are still certain things by sharing one scripture. God can expand it for me or give me. So it is, 
Just desire to grow. That's the thing. As newborn babe, desire the sincere milk of the world that you may grow thereby. Grow. And when you are matured, things can be handed over to you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Anyway, every affliction of long continuance, today we command it to cease. This is enough, it's enough. You must recognize that every affliction of long continuance is a manifestation of the cause of the law. And every cause of the law, Jesus has redeemed us from it. Galatians 3, 13 to 14. So you are no more under cause. You are blessed. You can, nobody can cause who God has blessed. You are the one God has blessed. So no one can cause you in Jesus' name. But know that any time suffering is beyond the why, it's no more, it's no more good. It's contrary to rights of redemption when it's more than a why. That's why the Bible said, 1 Peter 5, 10, but the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, stably, certain, and set to you. But to take delivery of our enough and all demands in this service, you must enter a covenant to serve God as a new way of life, and God will give you rest round about. In 2 Chronicles 15, 12 to 15, when they entered a covenant to seek and serve the Lord, God was found of them. God gave them rest round about. For 35 years, they enjoy rest. Don't you like that type? He said, if you obey and serve him, you will spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure. Seek you for the kingdom of God and the righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. So today, God is saying to all forces of hell, how to destroy any area of your life, enough is enough. Stay your hand. Enough is enough. That's why we need the violent cry of faith, like Bartimaeus, as we have heard in the service. Like Bartimaeus, you need a violent cry of faith to secure your own change of story. Psalm 56, verse 9. When I cry unto thee, then shall my enemies turn back. This I know, God is for me. Now, I'm going to give us opportunity to cry. And as you cry today, God will turn all those evils backward. Are you getting me now? So that you can move forward. Nothing will stop you. Rise on your feet. Now, we are going to pray. Please pick that up. Enough is enough. Please, we are going to pray in a short while. But before we pray, please, I want to give opportunity to us. John 3.3 3 says, Jesus answered and said unto them, Very, very, I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, hear me. You can't successfully show your beautiful house or your beautiful car to an unborn child. Can you do that? The child is not born. He cannot see. The same way, when you are not born again, you can't see what God is doing. Even if you say enough is enough, you say to what? <laughs> so here today, I want to give opportunity to everyone before we pray. If you know you are not born again, please don't pretend. Remember the sons of Sceva? They were pretending to be when they were not. And it's very dangerous. Because we're going to pray some warfare prayers here now. If you pray those prayers and you are not born again, they will come and wait for you outside the gate too. You are here, you know you need Jesus in your life as your Lord and your Savior. Or maybe you gave your life to Jesus, you are no more there, no peace, no joy. You want to return to him, he will return to you. Why not also surrender to him? Or somebody struggles with certain evil habits, you know all the things. Nobody knows, but you'll be struggling. Struggling, struggling, pornography, struggling. This way, indebtedness, gambling, all manner of things you're doing. Nobody knows. Please, be sincere and come to him. Let him help you. Let him help you. Let him help you. Now, you are among the category of people I mentioned, please, you want Jesus in your life as your Lord and your Savior. You want to see the kingdom of God. You want to be born again. Please put your hand on your chest like this. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I believe in my heart. You are the only Son of God. You died and you resurrected on the third day. Today, from my heart and with my mouth, I confess you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me. Write my name in the book of life. I am born again. I am a child of God.